Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to the Most High God, who has given us his holy word, in which we can learn of him and learn to do the things that please him. Verily I say unto you, when we do the things that please God, our lives go well. I have a very important message today and uh, this has is something that the Lord gave me after I was praying about a certain situation. So before I begin I just want to make mention of the fact that the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the Word of God. Other versions have been deliberately corrupted in many ways in order to destroy the faith of Jesus Christ. So those of us who love Jesus Christ we adhere to the Holy King James Bible, for it is, in our language, the Word of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm going to read for you a letter that I received from a, a sister a couple of days ago, and since I received it, I've been praying about it. And so I'm going to read this to you, and there's many things that all of us can learn from this, and I urge you to consider the entire video before commenting. Glory be to God. Hello, Sister Abby Elizabeth. Your recent videos in order in the home have blessed me so much. I am a wife and stay-at-home mother to four children, ages three months, five, seven, and 16. I often feel exhausted and overwhelmed. I will be tweaking our daily routine with some of the ideas you suggested in your video. I do have a few questions. I want to grow some of our own food, but have absolutely zero experience. Where and how do I start? Two, my 16-year-old son is in charge of throwing out the trash, putting clean dishes away, and keeping his room clean. I often find myself getting upset for having to remind him to get his chores done and clean his room correctly. Not sure what to do about this. I feel he should be doing much more around the house. Three, what chores do you recommend I give my children ages five, seven, and 16? Please keep me in prayer. Many times when my husband gets home from work, I get bitter when he spends his time playing video games versus the children. Or the baby is screaming and I'm brushing the other children's teeth and my husband doesn't help. It's hard with a three-month-old to have her on a schedule. Is it wrong for me to expect my husband to help with the children when he's home? Hallelujah. Well, there's many questions in this letter that we want to understand the right way from the Word of God in terms of how to run a household and how to raise our children. Glory be to God. So the Word of God says that we should train up a child in the way he should go. But most of us, I know I was, and I'm almost 62 years old, were born into a Marxist feminist system and a system of false religion, and we were taught the wrong way ourselves, and so it's not automatic that we know the right way. So myself personally, my mother was a feminist, but I, my parents were religious people, and they thought they were serving God. And my mother did do most of the cooking and cleaning, but she didn't do all of it, and my earthly father helped her on his days off and when he got home from work. Furthermore, um, what I was taught as a child was that I was to do certain chores. And chores are, that word, if you think about it, chore means something that you don't really enjoy doing, that's hard to do, it's unpleasant. That's what a chore is. And so I was given certain chores, such as to weed the garden when I wasn't at school. So I went to the government training camps. I wasn't taught by my mother at home or my father at home. I was taught in the government training camps and on my days off, my days off, on Saturday, I was expected to go out in the hot weather and weed the garden or to do things like clean the bathroom. This is not the right way 
to train up a child in the way that he or she should go. Because what happens is that the child is going to see the hypocrisy in that, and they're also going to resent it. And therefore, they're going to be very resistant to doing the things that you want them to do. And the reason for this is the whole system is out of whack. It's not that it needs a little tweaking. And, and my sister, I'm not trying to at all disparage your questions because I would have thought the same thing. So what is she doing? Let's name what it is that the problem is here. She is doing things for her children and for her husband by herself. And the children are only expected to do pretty minimal things. And even though she senses in her heart that her older son should be doing more, she doesn't understand what has caused that problem with his being unwilling to really be cooperative and being kind of resentful. And she also doesn't understand why she herself is becoming bitter and feeling overwhelmed. So what I want to address in this video it pertains to mothers, but it also pertains to wives, to women in general, and how it is that we act and how it is that we serve God. So when a woman is doing for her children and she basically expects them to do a few things to help her out and she might choose the things that are unpleasant that she doesn't want to do because she feels that she's already doing everything anyway, that this creates the wrong impression in her children about what it means to be in a family. So, for example, if we have a, an older son and we expect him to be the one to always take out the garbage, that son is going to look at us and think, well, she has me do this because she doesn't feel like doing it. And he's going to look at us and he's going to see that we're bitter and resentful and overwhelmed about what we're doing. And they're going to feel resentful and rebellious against us because we are expecting them to do something we're not doing. Now, another example of this is that, for example, if we're telling our children that they should not be on their phones, that we want them to, to be doing more wholesome activities, but we're on our phones all the time, and we want our children to go play while we go through the work as fast as we can, and I'm not saying this is the case with this sister, but this can happen, it needs to be addressed, that we tell our children that they shouldn't be on the phone, but we're on the phone. And we tell our children that we expect them to, say, take out the garbage or clean the bathroom or mow the lawn, and we're not doing those things, that that is the epitome of hypocrisy. And children are particularly sensitive to hypocrisy. So we should never ask a child to do something that we are not doing ourselves, just as the Lord Jesus Christ did not command Christians to do anything that he didn't do himself. And we know that a Christian walks as the Lord Jesus Christ walked. So let's go to 1 John chapter 2, and I believe it's verse 6. Let's read here. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. So a Christian models their life after the way Jesus Christ walked. And a parent does the same thing in the family. You know, the family is a little tiny microcosm of the grander society. So a family is a microcosm of what should be happening in the Christian church as well. So the husband is the head of the wife, and the wife is the one who's a servant in his household. And the way that the family is, is also a small picture of the body of Christ in general. Now, th the reason I'm bringing this up, this is very important, is that when we've been brought up the wrong way, we have a lot of expectations and demands when we first become a Christian that are unreasonable and wrong and out of order. And one of them is to expect 
someone else who's been walking with the Lord longer to tell us what to do, to, to, to discern for us what is good and true. Instead of learning from the Holy Word of God ourselves and being obedient to the scripture. So Jesus Christ said, my mother and my brethren are these that hear the word of God and do it. He also said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. Well, what are the commandments? Well, you know, there's a lot of commandments in the scripture, but we want to kind of simplify things a little bit here today. So let's go. Let's go to Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 36, and we will read through verse 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So when we're trying to train up a child in the way that he or she should go, as it is written in Proverbs 22 and verse 6, we understand that the way to do so is to walk as Jesus Christ walked, and to remember ourselves to be walking in obedience to the principles contained in Scripture. So we love God above all else, and we love our neighbor as ourself. Teaching a child how to love and how to be a valuable member of the body of Christ, to raise them up to be a Christian, means that we need to be examples to our children and teachers. Jesus Christ was an example, and he was a teacher. We need to do both. Now, Jesus Christ didn't do for other people what they could do for themselves. He taught them what to do. For example, he said to them, bless those that curse you. So he didn't go around trying to bless everybody only. He blessed people with the truth and with his example and by healing them and by speaking his Father's word and by teaching them what to do. And this is how we should be as mothers in our families, my sisters. We should not be doing for everybody. For example, and I, I, I'm just, just going to use this because this is what the sister used as her example. She said she was brushing her five-year-old and her seven-year-old's teeth, and the baby was screaming, and her husband might be playing video games, and that she was feeling bitter and resentful. Well, this is, of course, is a system that is completely out of whack and needs a complete overhaul. And the way isn't for this sister to demand that her husband help her. The way is for this woman, the sister, to recognize what it is that a Christian does. When we are raising up our children, we don't do all of the work so that they can become entitled, selfish people who expect everything to be done for them, as most of us were before we became a Christian. So I had been brought up the wrong way, and I had been given chores, which I resented and rebelled against. I saw the hypocrisy in my family, and I resented it. I saw that my mother was bitter, and my father was a wimp. And pardon me for that language, but that's the truth. And I didn't want my family to be that way, but I didn't know the right way. And so when I had children, I did a lot of the same things. And one of them was was that I thought, as the mother, I was supposed to do all the cooking, all the cleaning, all the gardening. I was supposed to be there for everybody while everybody else relaxed and did whatever they wanted. So I would tell the children to go play because I had a lot of work to do. And when they were doing that, they were getting into things they shouldn't get into. And my children were pretty well behaved. So it wasn't really apparent to me that it was wrong what I was doing. 
And so it was when I was a little girl that most of the time I was doing okay, but there came a time in my life when that rebellion and resentment and bitterness that was in me because of the wrong way I was being raised, the way I saw the hypocrisy in my family and their religiosity, the things they said they were versus the things they really were. There was bitterness and resentment and anger and, and all kinds of emotional manipulation and sullenness and, and, and uh, disorder in, in the house in which I grew up. And ultimately what that led to is me being in rebellion, departing from that household and getting into a lot of trouble. Now, can this work out? Yeah, it can work out after many, many years and much suffering, and I don't recommend it. And this is not the way that we want to raise our children. So we don't want to be doing all kinds of work for the family and having the children go play. And then assigning them chores, which are the things that are particularly burdensome to us. Instead, what we need to do is change the basic system with which we are operating. So that would be to start to run the household with everybody involved. And of course, our husband, if he's, especially if he's not in the faith, is, you know, he, we don't try to get him involved or make him do anything. We recognize that as godly women, we are in charge of the house. We are keepers at home and we guide the house. According to the scripture, that's what we do. So we begin to do our thing right and it may follow that our husband will see that and it will be a light to him and he will also want to change what he's doing. But we don't do it for the purpose of changing our husband. We do it because it's commanded unto us as godly women. This is what we're supposed to do. So when we have children, we're given children so that we will train them up in the way that they should go. We do not put them in the government training camps because if we do, they will be brought up to serve the government. And as Christians, we were given children to bring them up, to train them up in the way that they should go so that they will serve God and that they will love God and they will love their neighbor as themselves. And this means that they are with us. We don't send them off to do something else while we do all the work. Rather, the family and the household is something that has in it enjoyable, pleasurable things and work, and work should be pleasurable. To create in the mind of a child that work is a chore is incorrect. We want them to see the value of work. We want them to see how good it feels to be part of a community and to contribute to it. We want them to have self-respect because of a job well done, not because they have, not to have self-esteem as the world would have them have. In other words, to feel good about themselves just because they happen to be born. This is incorrect. And it creates in children narcissism, entitlement, and the idea that anything hard is somehow not something they want to do. But verily I say unto you, the things that are difficult, self-discipline, doing things for others, is not the natural tendency of the flesh, which if it could, would become a marshmallow. The flesh would become a marshmallow if we allowed it to. And so we want to exemplify for our children about taking pleasure in taking care of our house, no matter what the task is. If it's cleaning the floor, we can take pleasure in cleaning the floor. And you might say, oh, that's impossible. Well, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. There are people who don't have a floor to clean. And if we're feeling resentful about cleaning our floor, we're ungrateful. God has provided for us many things, and when we take care of them, we are like Adam, who is put in the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. When we're given a home and children, we should take pleasure in doing these things. So, of course, 
All of running a house is not washing the floor. There are many other activities. There's things like seeing plants come up out of the ground or creating a beautiful meal or teaching our children about the elements of, of, of um, what is in the scripture regarding bread, for example. So we might be baking bread and they are learning how to bake bread by participating in that process. And we might be talking about the bread from heaven, the word of God. You see, if our children are not with us, whether or not we're homeschooling them makes no difference. Because if we're sitting them down in chairs at little desks and following the government protocol for what we're supposed to be teaching them, then they, we might as well send them to the government schools. Secondly, if we're, we're sitting them down and teaching them for maybe an hour or two, and then we send them off to have fun, while we then, after doing that, then attend to the things in the house, of course, we are going to be overwhelmed and resentful and bitter. But not only that, they're off by themselves, doing who knows what. Who knows what. So chaos and confusion. The children are off by themselves, making noise, maybe fighting with one another, maybe creating a mess. It is not for us to, to be running around after our children with a mop or trying to command them to do certain things. Rather, we want to do certain things with them from the time they are very, very, very young. Very, very, very young. So the baby should be with us. The baby can be in the high chair with us while we're cooking, and maybe we'll give them a little bit to play with. Maybe we're mixing things with spoons, and we might give them a bunch of spoons to play with. But the children should be around the mother. And the mother, in, in doing the things that she does, would naturally be help, asking the children to help. And the children, of course, if they are brought up this way from the beginning, want to help. As a matter of fact, when I was a little girl, I wanted to help my mother. And she wanted me out of the way. Because I just made things go more slowly. Or maybe I didn't do it perfectly. And because she was out in the world earning money, and because she had limited time and was harried and upset most of the time, then when I wanted to learn the things that she was doing, I was just in the way. So we want to exemplify for our children what it means to be a Christian. And every single Christian is ca called to be a servant. We're called to be servants unto one another in the body of Christ. And every member of the body of Christ is important. As Paul wrote, he wrote, Can the hand say, I have no need of the foot? Can the eye say, I have no need of the ear? We all have an important place, and we all have something that we're good at. And when we command a child to do chores, and particularly to do things that we don't feel like doing, then what happens is that they don't see the value of being part of a system, and they don't learn to do anything well. You see, there might be things that your one of your children is very good at that your other children is not. Maybe they're really good at taking care of the animals or the garden, or maybe they're very good at cooking, or maybe they're very good at something else, like taking care of the other younger children, or maybe they're good at building things. But you're not going to know these things, if you're, first of all, if you're not with them and they're not doing these things with you. And secondly, you're teaching them that work is burdensome instead of work being as it should be which is meaningful. When we are doing work, we are doing something meaningful. We are doing things for the people around us so they, they can feel good. And they are doing things for us so that we can feel good. And all of this is done in devotion to God. The scripture says that if someone will not work, neither should they eat. And this should be the way that we train up our children in the way they should go. If they don't want to contribute to what's happening on a daily basis in the family, then they should be forbidden to partake of the blessings that come forth from that work. 
And I know that sounds very harsh, and a lot of people might think, really? Well, no. Actually, what's worse? Letting your child do whatever they want and letting them pig out and do whatever they want, no matter how disrespectful they are, no matter how rebellious they are, that's not loving. So we tell people, well, if you want part of this bread, you better be part of this bread coming forth. Because the bread that I'm making is for those who contributed. The meal that I'm making is for those that contributed. And there are many ways to contribute. It might be in meal planning. It might be in getting the ingredients ready. It might be in mixing something. It might be cleaning up. It might be in watching the time to make sure that the bread doesn't burn. There are many things that children can do to contribute. But they should be contributing in all the processes of the house and taught in the midst of that activity rather than having the child stuff be compartmentalized and the mom running around after everybody trying to do for them. So a woman who has a five-year-old and a seven-year-old should have taught them how to brush their teeth when they were about three or maybe even younger. This shows me that the, this young sister is doing her best to do the right thing, and she truly thinks she is doing the right thing. But she can't do the right thing if she doesn't know the right thing. And none of us can know the right way unless someone tells us, and so thus I'm telling you. So if you have a firstborn child, and at age three you teach them how to brush their teeth, and then they come to you and you check to make sure that they did it right, and then that three-year-old grows up to be a six-year-old, and you have another three-year-old. That six-year-old can teach the three-year-old. And so you can say, little one, can you help your brother to understand how to brush his teeth? And then you're with the baby, the next baby, the three-month-old. And the six-year-old is feeling very good about himself for knowing something and teaching his younger brother or sister. This is the proper way to run a family and to have many children. And as I said before, if we don't teach our children the value of being responsible and the value of being an integral and important part of what happens in the family, and instead we send them off to the government training camps or we send them off to play, then what's going to happen is rebellion and disobedience. In order to be respected, if we want our children to respect us, we need to be respectable. And that means we don't expect them to do anything that we're not doing. So if we say to our 16-year-old, as it were, that he should not be on his phone playing video games all day, then we need to put away our phone as well. It doesn't matter if we're using video games. It matters that we want to be an example to our children. We also want them to see that we are walking according to what the Word says. That we love God and we love our neighbor as ourself. And that doesn't mean that we're a slavish, silent, resentful, bitter creature. It means that we're intelligent, and thoughtful, and kind, and loving, and that we share the wisdom that we have with our children so that they can be that way also. I hope that this is helping those of you who are trying to understand how it is that we walk as a Christian. Because God, our Father, loved us first. Before we loved God, he loved us. And Jesus Christ gave himself for us while we were yet sinners. The way a godly woman gives herself to her family is not to resentfully attend to every single need and, and find herself bitter and overwhelmed. Rather, the way a godly woman exemplifies the love of Jesus Christ to her children is by showing them and teaching them the way that they should go. And this is a full-time job, and the family belongs together. So if we're going shopping, everybody should be helping with the shopping. 
If we have a lot of children, the older children should be helping with the younger children. If there's something that we're having difficulty with, with the younger children, then the older child should be there to help. And this is true whether or not we have a husband. And if our husband is doing the wrong thing, as it seems in this particular case, that he goes to work and then comes home to play video games, the way to fix that problem isn't to start telling him what to do or start correcting him about how we feel he is wrong. Instead, the right way is for us to keep our side of the street clean and doing the things that God commands unto us. If we do so, a man will see that and he'll feel convicted about sitting on the couch playing video games and he'll start to do something more useful. And that might involve building something, doing something in the yard, reading the word of God to the children. But again, that won't happen if we try to make him do so because that's out of God's order. The woman is not to usurp authority over the man or to teach the man. Rather, she is to serve the man. And if she does so properly in his house, then that will naturally shine the light of the truth of God's word into his heart. And a man who is made differently than a woman, instead of becoming spoiled and bratty by seeing that, what will happen is that he will be convicted and change. So I pray that this message has been helpful to you, sister, who wrote to me. And thank you for your patience and waiting for a response. I really had to pray about these questions. Glory be to God. I remain here for you. Feel free to email me if you like or to comment in the comment section underneath the video. In Jesus' name, amen.